Hey everyone, Ken Carlson here with uh, Country Guitar Chops. Uh, I thought I'd go over my uh, my guitar today, my gear. We've gone over a little bit of my gear. I'm going to go over my guitar here. Uh, my main guitar, uh, you know, a few guitars here. Show you what I've done. A lot of people ask when they see this what uh, what I've done to it. So I'll I'll explain that. Go over that with you. Uh, the most noticeable thing here is um, the B bender. Um, I guess I should start by saying that this is a Squire, uh, Fender Squire. It's a Mexican-made Squire. Um, out of the five tellies that I own, this is the cheapest one. Uh, I, I gave 300 bucks for it when I bought it. Um, I had just purchased a GNL ASAT a few months prior to this. And a great guitar. I loved it. Um, and, and I bought this for something to mess around with. So I had no intention of it being my main axe, but it just felt so good and, and sounded so good. It was just, you know, I, I played a ton of them. Um, something you should know about guitars right off the bat is you can pick up 20 of these. Same identical guitars. Uh, you can pick up 20 of them and they're all going to sound different. The tone is all here in this chunk of wood. So uh, if it doesn't have the, the good wood, the, the pickups. Ain't gonna make a bit of difference. Too many people put uh, 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 too much faith in pickups. They they believe pickups are gonna change the sound, and it's it's kind of like recording. Uh, you know, there's a saying in recording, uh, audio recording, garbage in, garbage out. If you make a bad recording, you, you know, it's gonna sound like garbage going in, and you can do all the polishing on it that you want, but basically you got a polished turd. Uh, it's just it ain't gonna sound good. So, same thing with the guitar. If the uh, uh, you know if it doesn't have a good chunk of wood to resonate and give it that tone, I don't care what you put in it for pickups. It ain't gonna sound it ain't gonna sound any better. So pickups are gonna enhance the tone that's already there. And this guitar had the tone that I liked, um, the weight that I liked. You know, they're, if you know anything about guitars, they they all weigh. A, a, they weigh a different uh, amount, and that's because the wood, no two pieces of wood are identical. Um, so this was kind of a medium weight. Uh, it's a lot lighter now because of the work I've done to it, but uh, um, yeah, great, great sounding guitar. The only thing that uh, I'm a little unhappy with right now is I, I pretty much wore the frets down here, the first five frets out, and let's see, when did I buy this? 96, I think is when I bought this guitar. 95, 96. Um, so I'd kind of worn the frets out down here. Well, I got myself a fret leveler, a radius board, and leveled them out. And I, I, th I took more fret off than I wanted to. Uh, so all the frets are too low now. And I like a, uh, I really didn't re know this until just recently. I like a jumbo, a higher, higher fret. I'm having a hard time bending. The strings are harder to bend. Um, yeah, just not happy with the feel of it right now. So uh, I'm either going to replace the neck with something with jumbo frets on it or replace them myself, which I pretty much tackle projects like that. I, I love to tinker with stuff, which is why I bought this guitar to begin with, just something to tinker with. Uh, so I'll probably wind up uh, uh, trying to replace the frets myself, which I did on my original 78 telly um, you can't see it over there but it was originally black like this and I've repainted it and it weighs a ton uh, uh, weighs as much as a heavy Les Paul and, and uh, a real thin sounding real because of that it's, it's just it's not a real good chunk of wood um, this is very heavy very very tinny sounding and and, uh, and and I didn't like that so what I wound up doing with that guitar uh, uh, well I was in Nashville I was the only tell you I had, I routed out underneath the pick guard to lighten that thing up and, 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 and took a little bit off, you know, pound or so off there, but still weighed a ton. Uh, the last thing I did to it was fillet it. I took it down to a cabinet shop and had them fillet it, you know, down this way. So took a quarter inch off the top and so I had two pieces and then I took a paddle bit and paddled it all. Uh, bored it all out inside there so I chambered it is what I did. Glued it all back together, and so now it's thinner, but still weighs a ton. Um, this is this has just been my main guitar since I since I bought it, um, and, I, and I'm real happy with it. So let's get back to what I've done to it. Um, 
uh, I was talking about this here, the, uh, the B bender on it. Uh, this is a hip shot B bender, which the hip shot's normally mounted back here, uh, you know, folds over the end, and then there's a bar that attaches to your hip, and to activate it, you would push, just take your arm and push the guitar over, and activates the B bender. Well, I, I didn't want that, so, uh, and, I, and I thought about, kick this around for about two years, how I could modify that and make it work off, off the lever, which is how I've got it set up here. I called Hipshot up and asked him if they had ever, if they had anything like that, and the guy, you know, this is a guy who invented the hip shot. He said, no, people have tried it, but nobody's made it work, you know, and I said, well, I think I got an idea here using a, uh, a Harley cable, you know, bike cable there, I, I, I think I can make that work. And so he said, uh, well, I'll send in some photos of it, you know, if it works, and, and uh, he'll post them, and, and uh, I never did, that was 15, 17 years ago. Um, knock on wood, it's, it's been, been working so far. I suppose now that I say it, it'll probably be a break on me here. Um, so what I did, I drilled holes. If you can see in the back there, I'll kind of uh, see if I can move this around to where you can see. Yeah, I got a black plastic cover in there. Well, you can see it. I, I routed that all out back there. Uh, you can also see that I've got string through ferrules on there, which is something else I did. You know, I didn't have that. On it when I got it. But anyway, I routed this all out back here and put a lever in there and, and uh, a spring and, and uh, a Harley Davidson cable. And, and uh, I actually had two, two benders on here at one time. I had another one that was a G bender. And uh, let's see if I can go back here again. If you can see that on the neck plate here, uh, there was the cable came through with a, an eye hook was soldered on the end there. That, so that would activate that. You would connect that to your belt loop over here and push the guitar, and, and that would activate the, the B, or G bender. I uh, didn't like that one at all because it, uh, uh, it bent the whole neck. The whole neck would go out of tune. And the only way I could make that work was going to a 15 gauge string, which I didn't like. 15 gauge string was just too light, no tone. So I never used the, the G. I believe uh, the way Brad Paisley's guitars are set up, he uses a, a B and a G bender also. And it's my understanding that the way his are set up is that that's the G. The, the G is on the strap, which makes a lot more sense. And the B is on the push. Um, B string, obviously a lot lighter. It's not gonna, it's not gonna bend the neck when you, when you do it that way, which is a logical way to do that. Um, if I'd have known that back then, or if I had a half a brain to figure that out, I would have done it that way myself. But I was just so used to bending with the, with the, the G string anyway. Even today, I, I really don't use the B, the B bender like, like I should. Uh, I've, I've never really spent that much time to, uh, to figure out some really cool licks on it. You know, I, I use it for uh, stuff like that. and. Um, um, I really can't even show you some bead lick bender licks because I just, like I said, I've never really, other than, other than that, I get a six sound by playing a uh, barred chord coming up like that. And the other one I showed you was, you know, here I'm thinking of a, a D chord, so if I, if I play it as a sus, bring it up. Um, so. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll sit down and work on some looks on it, put a, put a video together and some B-Bender licks for you. Uh, so that's that. Um, I've got the traditional saddles on there with the brass saddles. I put that on there. I like that a lot. I like the tone I get out of that. Um, another thing about this saddle uh, that I did, and I was just watching a Danny Gatton uh, video here. It was yesterday, as a matter of fact. And I'm sitting here watching his, 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 the video, and I noticed he did the same thing to his guitar. Uh, my fingers get in the way of this traditional bridge. I like the traditional bridge, um, but my fingers are always caught on the bottom lip of this bridge. So you can see here as I zoom in close, I've, I took an, put this on a, a, a drum sander, and I drilled that away, or sand, uh, sanded that away. So now my fingers are free there, they don't, they don't snag. That's one of the best improvements I've made on this guitar in years. I don't know why I didn't think of this years ago. I just did it a couple months ago. Um, yeah, love that. That's a great mod that I did there. Um, another mod moving up here is I added a center pickup, obviously. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, let's go back to this pickup. This is a Seymour Duncan, the Brent Mason pickup. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I've got a Brent Mason. If, if you're familiar with Brent, my guitar is set up like, like he has his. Uh, put the middle pickup in there, and it's still a three-way toggle switch. This pickup is on a volume pot of its own. That's all it's connected to. There's no tone knob for it or anything. Just a volume, so I can bleed this pickup in and out. Um, so I can have the traditional telly sound with the three pickups or bleed that in like if I'm in this back pickup here by turning that on all the way I've got these two pickups. Um, what convinced me to do that when Brent was talking about it on a videotape of his, he talked about bleeding this in and getting various tones. Uh, it doesn't work like a tone knob back here where it washes it out and gets muddy. It just kind of takes it off if you've Got it almost on, not quite all the way on. Um, it, it, it's got a really cool uh, tone change on it. it. Takes that high telly bite out of there, and uh, and I really like that. That's what he said he really liked about his, so and that's what convinced me to do it. So. Uh, uh, I, I've kept it like that. I, I keep thinking I'm going to go to a three-way or a five-way toggle switching and get that knob out of there so I can do finger swells. Um, because right now I can't get my pinky in there, you know, I, I, I can't do any swells while I'm playing if you're familiar with, with how to do volume swells by rolling your pinky. Um, so I'm stuck to using my foot on the pedal board to get my volume swells, which locks me in front of the pedal board, um, which I don't mind, but, uh, you know, people like to see you out on the dance floor or whatever, you're away from that, getting out and rocking out on the, around the stage, and uh, when I'm doing stuff like that, it kind of kind of locks me in. So, like I say, don't bother me. It, some of the other band members would like to see me away from the pedal board a little more. But, or if I go court wireless, you know, and, and run out and jump off the stage or, you know, various parts of the stage, it'd be nice for that. But anyway, whatever. <laughs>